Out men from every nation under heaven. Why? Because it was a holy feast day. He says, and when the sound occurred, the multitude came together. They ran out of their rooms. They come rushing down here. And they were confused because everyone heard them speak in his own language. And you say, oh, are you saying that that's all? No, I'm just saying here, in this case, they all heard their own language. Now, let's go on and read a little more. It says, And they were all amazed and marveled, saying one to another, Look, are not all these who speak Galileans? That was like a slang, by the way, term. He says, Now, is it, how is it that we hear each in our own language in which we were born? And then he names off all these languages. If you drop down to 11, it says, He says, We, bear, we hear them speaking in our own tongue the wonderful works of God. Now, well, let's read a little more here. He says, so they were amazed and they perplexed, saying to one to another, he says, what could this mean? And others mocking said, they're full of new wine. Full of new wine? In my D.C. days, as before Christ, I was around a lot of guys that was full of new wine. <laughs> and I heard speak all kinds of things. But I've been in a lot of states and I've been in a lot of countries. And I've never heard a drunk man speak Kansan. Y'all know what I mean, y'all? Okay. They didn't speak my language and they certainly weren't speaking about the wonderful works of God. So logic tells us that's not what's going on. Now Peter says, but well, you know, it's the third hour. He's standing up to the left. He says, raise his voice and said to them, he says, men of Judah and all dwell in Jerusalem, let it be known to you. And heed my words, for these are not drunk as you suppose, since it is only the third hour of the day. I don't know about Pete. He must not hunt around the guys I did, because I knew a lot of guys who was drunk at 9 o'clock in the morning. So, you know, that's not what's going on. What is going on about the wonderful works of God? But I don't want you to miss something here. Who's saying this stuff to him? Peter. Peter? This is the same guy that a little girl standing at a fire when Jesus was out on trial denied the Lord three times. This is a guy that said, Lord, they might all run from you, but not me. I'll stand and defend you. And that's when the Lord said, A oh, Pete. That that you think you're strong in, that's your weakness. You'll end up denying, denying me three times before the, the, the rooster crows in the morning, you know? And so, after that happened, of course, Pete was really broke. Because the truth of the matter is, that's our flesh is weak. You know, Paul ends up telling us later, he says that 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 you think you're strong in, that's your weakness. That that you're weak in, you're strong in Christ Jesus who's in you. You can be strong in that place. But here's this same guy, Peter, now. Who's he standing up in front of? Thousands of Jewish rabbis who just 40 days earlier turned his Lord over to Pilate. And they're not happy about coming out this time of the morning. And they're saying, you guys are just drunk. And Pete's standing up there in front of them. Whole different thing. Did you remember... He says that you're going to be baptized with the Holy Spirit, that power that you might be witnesses unto me. Remember when we read that? Do you know that that same work in Greek means martyr? And that some of them standing there, maybe all of the disciples heard, you'll be filled with the Holy Spirit and you'll be martyrs for me. You're going to die. Well, in the place where they lived in that time, people died around them daily. They were being crucified by the Romans. They lined the roads with people being crucified. The word martyr and the word witness, the same. How come? Why didn't God use a different word? Because we're supposed to be martyrs for Christ. You die to yourself and let the Lord Jesus Christ have his way in your life. You, you'll end up like... Jesus said in the garden, not my will, not my life, but your will, Father. You will be a martyr. You have to die. You have to become less that he might become more and be lifted up. It isn't. It isn't just a, a nice way we say, we say witness. 
You see, for you to witness about the Lord, he doesn't want you to witness like you would witness about President Obama. Well, there's this guy, Obama, what's his middle name? I don't know. Well, he's in Washington, D.C., and, and what was his family, and, and, and where do you... Well, I, I don't know. Well what, well, what does he like to eat? Well, I don't know. See, God doesn't want us to witness like that. He wants us to witness like, yeah, Jesus. I talk like him now. I walk like him now. We're going to see that this same guy, Peter, later on is brought before trial. And he said, boy, he sounds like he's doing Jesus. Because he talked like him now. How is that possible? The same Holy Spirit coming and living inside of us. People ask me all the time, it says, what's the evidence of the Holy Spirit in your life? I get that a, a lot when I head at churches and, and even at the Bible school. How do you know that the Holy Spirit is inside of you? Is it because you can speak in tongues? Is it because you can flip open your Bible to a certain passage and it speaks to you? Is it because... You know what the evidence of the Holy Spirit in your life is? according to the totality of the Bible, a changed life. From what you were into the image of Christ Jesus. And every day that the Holy Spirit is operating in your life, He's changing you. Why? Because God is holy. And it's a holy place we're going to go live in. And believe me, He loves you so much, He won't let you have to live in heaven next to somebody like me. So he's going to make me holy. So that you'll have a nice neighbor. Of course, he's going to make you holy. So I'll have a nice neighbor too. That's the purpose of the Holy Spirit. Is to transform us. The gifts were given to us not to play. The gifts are given to us that we might change. We might then enter into the kingdom of God. Remember this. The kingdom of God is a spiritual kingdom. You can't operate in the flesh in the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God requires you to operate in the spirit. We're going to go live in the spirit. Yeah, we're going to get a new glorified body. But believe me, we're going to be living in holiness for eternity. And we need, we are being changed into that now. Paul says you dimly see what you are now, but later on we're going to see the whole thing. Well, let's get back to the scriptures here. And he says... They were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in tongues. And all these people in all these different languages heard them. He says, and, and he says, they're not drunk. Peter says, they're not drunk. He says, and in, in 17 it says, and it shall come to pass in the last days, says God, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see visions. And your old men shall dream dreams. That's where I'm at, by the way, in the dream and dreams, the old men. He says, on my maid servants and on my... Uh, men servants, he said, and I'll pour out my spirit in those days, and they shall prophesy, and I'll show wonders in heaven above. Do you realize how much scripture old Pete's quoting? And do you realize that this is not just verse memorized because this is a piece out of this, and a piece out of this over here? This is the Holy Spirit operating inside of him. He says, and the sun shall be, and, and look at this part here, in 19, he says, and I'll show wonders in heavens above, the signs of the earth beneath, the blood, the fire, the vapor, the smoke, the sun shall be turned into darkness, the moon into blood before the coming of the great and awesome day of the Lord. Where, where do you read that at? In the book of Revelation, isn't it? Right? And guys, it's 50 more years after this until the book of Revelation is going to be penned. It's John's not on the Isle of Patmos yet. Isn't that awesome? Oh, Holy Spirit's working, isn't he? He says, and in 21, he says, and it shall come to pass that whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Oh, I think that's awesome. I right, praise God for that. 22, men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, the man attested by God to you, he says, by miracles, wonders, signs, which God did. What? what why did God do the miracles, the wonders, the signs with Jesus? To attest to him. Why? So that you would believe what he's saying. <coughs> you see, Jesus didn't do the miracles and just throw in some words afterwards to fill in the gaps. It's all about the word and the miracles. The signs and wonders shall follow. You see, uh, and, and I, I, I really honestly believe the more we get into 